So my dad, who is a regular human food bar eater, just got this cool new glucose monitor. It's a real-time monitor. And we are really excited to test out how human food bar impacts blood sugar. So I'm gonna eat this, and then this monitor in 10 minutes or so is gonna be advising us to say just exactly what's happening with my blood sugar after it's, my body starts digesting this food. Here's my day, nine o'clock or so I get breakfast. I get a ham and egg croissant. It was delicious, but look what it did to my blood sugar. Then I went a couple hours later here, I had this human food bar. My blood sugar doesn't budge. That's what I want during my day is to have a snack that doesn't put my sugar over the line. Why do you think human food bar had no impact on your blood sugar? Lots of fiber, good protein, no sugar. That's what you want. Tastes good, keeps my energy up. I like them. His blood glucose barely went up at all. Oh. It was really cool. It would be pretty surprising if it if it did. I mean, it's it's a great quality bar. Well, please expand on that. So there's several different components of the bar that would offer benefits for blood sugar balance and not be, you know, a type of snack or a food addition that would cause a large spike in blood sugar. So the first thing is resistant starches, right? So these are a type of carbohydrate that I know you're familiar with but they resist digestion in the small intestine. So they ferment in the colon, they feed the beneficial bacteria, and they, again, are promoting this compound called butyrate, the short-chain fatty acid. And what we know from research is that this can improve insulin sensitivity. It can even do other things like help with bowel movements, reduce inflammation. So resistant starch is one component of that that is going to support blood sugar and could explain why he really didn't see much of a shift at all. The other component is just the, the healthy fats that are in the bar. You know, fat can slow the digestion of any sort of glucose into the blood which is a good thing, right? We want to see a nice, slow, gradual increase in our blood sugar, not a massive spike. And then just total fiber, right? We know that fiber in general, it slows down the release of glucose into the blood as well. So between the fiber, the resistant starch, and the healthy fats, that makes it a really great option for people that are looking to avoid those large increases in blood sugar, especially for snacks. Because I think for, for a lot of people, snacks can be where things get really tricky when it comes to supporting their blood sugar.